Hello everyone, my name is Derek Tran. I work as a senior exercise physiologist at the Department of Cardiology, Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, with the Congenital Heart Service. I also teach exercise physiology units at the University of Sydney in both the undergraduate and postgraduate programs. How do you suggest people with a Fontan circulation use heart rate or activity monitors for sports and exercise? But we actually use heart rate monitors to prescribe exercise intensity. It's generally not often used as a tool for safety. So what I mean by that is a certain percentage of your maximal heart rate, so the maximal heart rate you can achieve uh, during the exercise, uh, will correspond to a certain intensity category. So I can give us an example of that. So if you can achieve 160 beats per minute during your maximal exercise test, we'll take a percentage of that which uh, will reflect a certain intensity category. So let's say we want to perform moderate intensity exercise, which is equivalent to 55 to 69% of your maximal heart rate. So then we'll take 55% of 160, which will give us 88 beats per minute, and 69% of 160, which will give us 110 beats per minute. So what we will do is get you the exercise between those two heart rates uh, to reflect moderate intensity exercise. I should note that um, although that's a very simple way of estimating exercise intensity, uh, we've done a little bit of research and that seems to indicate that um, heart rate reserve is probably a better and more accurate method of estimating exercise intensity in people with congenital heart disease. Although this does take a few extra steps and does require knowledge and, uh, knowledge and exercise physiology to be able to perform. Um, so it, it is a little bit more challenging for you to do at home. Uh, one of the limitations of just the percentage of heart rate max is that sometimes you can actually get a heart rate that's below your resting heart rate, which is why we do prefer the heart rate reserve method. In terms of activity monitors, um, they're a very good way you could use to track simple um, measures such as steps per day. And you can use that to incrementally increase your physical activity levels as well. It was mentioned at the Fontaine Education Day that it is not uncommon for people with a single ventricle circulation to have low muscle tone. Can you explain what is thought to be the possible causes for this? So the exact causes is actually unknown and the mechanisms that underlie low skeletal muscle mass in the Fontaine circulation still remains unclear. Uh, although there's likely multiple factors do contribute to low skeletal muscle mass, and this can include poor nutrition, uh, malabsorption, low cardiac output, uh, poor peripheral blood flow, low oxygen levels, and physical inactivity. Uh, in my opinion, I think physical inactivity plays a major role in the underdevelopment of skeletal muscle mass in people with a Fontaine circulation. So physical inactivity as, uh, during childhood uh, limits the ability for the skeletal muscle mass to actually develop over time. And I think that does contribute to um, the low skeletal muscle mass that we do see often in adults. So I think that's one of the main causes there. So this question is, uh, is building physical stamina by weightlifting advisable? Would, you, would this place undue strain on the heart muscle? Um, resistance training is actually one of the only and most beneficial forms of therapy that has been shown to improve exercise capacity. Um, it is also important to note that resistance exercise doesn't have to be done in the gym. Uh, resistance exercise incorporates a whole range of uh, activities such as body weight exercises and lots of sports also have a resistance component to it. Um, so. In short, yes, we do advise that people do perform some form of resistance exercise uh, because it does tend to help improve exercise capacity through the skeletal muscle pump. Uh, and that's also consistent with the World Health Organization guidelines that you should be doing at least two days a week of uh, exercise or activities that strengthen the muscles. Um, in terms of placing undue strain on the heart, we've learned from other uh, cardiac populations that resistance training is generally safe when it is conducted appropriately. What that means is that um, you are, when you are performing resistance exercise, that you are using the correct breathing technique. 
So you're never holding your breath or the valsalfa maneuver. Uh, during the hardest part of the movement, you're breathing out. And during the easier part, you're breathing in. Uh, there's a correct progression in load. So you're not immediately trying to lift the heaviest load. You are building your way up slowly and incrementally to decrease the risk of injury. And that you do generally um, stay with low to vigorous intensity um, resistance training. And, but that will be dependent on your clinical characteristics and it will be individualized to each different person. So what are the general guidelines around weightlifting and strength training for people with a Fontaine circulation? Um, again, it's really quite individualized. And again, we've published those in our guidelines, depending on the level of risk we consider you to be, will depend on what guidelines uh, you'll be asked to follow. And your cardiologists will also help guide in that aspect of things. But in general, uh, you should aim to try and perform at least two days of resistance exercise per week. Um, and again, we won't be avoiding the, the valve salva maneuver. So um, straining or holding your breath as you are lifting those weights. And as a general rule of thumb, if you can't lift a load more than eight times, uh, the weight's probably too heavy and you should decrease the load. Uh, but again, these are just general guidelines. You should always discuss with your cardiologist and medical team. Some people might be able to perform more than what the guidelines say, and some people might be advised to do less. So this next question comes from someone who's had trouble finding an exercise physiologist who will work with them or the exercise physiologists who do work with them uh, compose exercises that are not appropriate for the Fontaine circulation. So the question is, do you know if there's a register for patients outlining exercise physiologists that specialize in complex heart conditions? Um, there actually is a uh, website which can help you find an exercise physiologist who will uh, be interested in cardiac exercise physiology. And that's the Exercise and Sports Science Australian website. Um, and you can see the link here. So it's sr.org.au. And I'll actually just walk us through now um, how to actually use that function. So if we jump onto the Exercise and Sports Science website, as you can see here, and you just scroll down, there's an SR search title here. And if we click on that, that will take us to the tool that will help you find an exercise physiologist around your area who will be willing to, or, or at least has an interest in uh, cardiac exercise physiology. And you can filter using the search tool based on multiple things such as language um, and the distance you're willing to. What you do want to click here is the special interest area. You want to hit cardiac and the distance you're willing to travel. And then what you want here is AAP, so accredited exercise physiologist. We just hit find. And from there, it will take you to a page uh, which lists a whole range of exercise physiologists who have indicated that they have a special interest in cardiac exercise physiology. And what you also see is their business name, the address of the business, uh, and the link to the website as well. So I hope uh, you'll be able to use this tool to find an exercise physiologist who will be willing to work with you and who will be appropriate as well. So the next question is, are there any resources that exercise physiologists can be directed to if they're working with patients with complex cardiac conditions? Uh, that's a very good question. And there have recently been a few resources that have been published. Uh, the main ones I will direct exercise physiologists to are the Australian ones. So we actually wrote a recommendations article uh, for exercise testing and training in people living with congenital heart disease. So that's this one here. Um, published in progress in cardiovascular diseases and you can also refer to the CSANS guidelines as well which is based on our original recommendations we also just recently published um, a separate kind of set of guidelines and recommendations uh, for exercise training and testing in the pre and post operative settings in addition to that the Europeans have also published a few guidelines uh, which do focus on exercise in congenital heart disease, as well as sports in congenital heart disease. And this one here is for children with congenital heart disease. So those are the few resources that I would direct people uh, to if they're working with people with congenital heart disease. 
So this question comes from someone's son who has just undergone a Fontaine operation and their doctor has advised for the best outcome uh, their son should be doing some regular exercise. And the question is, I would like to know if it will be beneficial from the same exercise physiologist on a regular basis and the reasons for this. I think that really does depend on how confident your son is at participating in sports and physical activity. If he's relatively confident already and will happily engage in um, various types of activities, then I don't think it'll be imperative that he does see an exercise physiologist. Although, if he's currently lacking a bit of con uh, a bit of confidence and does require a bit more help to increase his fitness, then um, it might actually be worthwhile to see an exercise physiologist, at least initially. So I guess the benefits of seeing an exercise physiologist will be he will start exercising in a supervised setting and there will hopefully be a structured program uh, which will progressively increase the target improvements in cardiorespiratory and muscular fitness. And once that happens, hopefully your son will build his confidence up and because he's fitter and stronger, he'll more likely be able to engage in uh, various types of physical activities and he'll probably enjoy them a lot more as well because he's uh, he might not be struggling to keep up um, as much because he is fitter and stronger. So those are some reasons that uh, would make it beneficial to see an exercise physiologist. And, but in general, I think um, doing regular physical activity some, through some means is, is the whole goal. And if seeing an exercise physiologist will help him do that, then, then it would be beneficial. The second question is, Regarding uh, research education, at the Fontaine Education Day, I think you mentioned there is ongoing research on the exercise in Fontaine. When is this research? What is the criteria for being part of it? How do people apply? Well, the research project is called the Fontaine Fit Trial, and our anticipated start date is the middle of 2020. So the middle of next year. It's actually split into a children's and an adult's program. For the children's program to be eligible, you have to be between 10 and 15. Um, and it's a program that involves education and uh, an exercise intervention once a week for four months. So what will happen is once a week, you'll come, go to a location like a community sports hall and there'll be an exercise physiologist there that will run you through some education for 30 minutes and um, also run you through an exercise program for uh, an hour and you'll do that for uh, four months and after that four month period you'll be followed up for eight months where you'll be continued to provide support um, remotely over the phone. Um, for the adults uh, there's a few different variations of the program. To be eligible you have to be between 16 and 55. Um, so depending on which group you get allocated into will depend on what that would involve. One group will be doing exercise training at home over uh, Zoom or some other form of web-based um, uh, web based program. Uh, another group will be doing exercise at a gym where again, an exercise physiologist will um, guide you through exercise three times a week for four months. And then um, the last group will be a weightless control. If you're in that group, you basically continue on with routine care until one year and then you'll get offered an exercise program at the end. And similarly with the kids, if you get allocated to the weightless control group, you will still get offered an exercise, uh, a chance to participate in the exercise program at the very end. In terms of um, more detailed criteria of eligibility, um, the research team will actually contact you and, and determine whether you are eligible or not next year. So these next few questions are about hospital rehabilitation programs. What resources would you suggest we turn to for post-surgery rehabilitation? So I think one of the key resources you can go to is the traditional cardiac rehabilitation programs. Although I do understand that a lot of people with a Fontaine circulation and congenital heart disease uh, don't particularly like those programs because they do tend to cater towards an older, more frail population. So if you don't like attending those programs, uh, another potential option is to see your community exercise physiologist. Uh, and they can be a really good person to get you to 
uh, and plan and prescribe exercise in that post-operative setting. Uh, and if you are eligible for a chronic disease management plan, uh, you can also see an exercise physiologist for five sessions for free. Uh, so that's a plan you can uh, see your GP to see if you're eligible for that program. Um, I think what does help is that we again have recently published some recommendations and guidelines about uh, exercise in that pre and post operative setting. So hopefully that will um, help facilitate the uh, exercise physiologists in delivering post surgery rehabilitation programs. And then the second question is uh, how might we seek to influence the post surgery rehabilitation program to be more inclusive of young adults? Uh, that's a really good question again. Uh, more recently, I think cardiac rehab programs at the major centres are seeing more young people with congenital heart disease post-surgery. So they're starting to get used to seeing young people and, and that's going to slowly shift the dynamic of those programs. Um, in addition to that, I think the more research that does come out, the more likely there will be a specialised cardiac rehab program for young people. And we are certainly seeing that in um, some other major centers around the world, like the US. So I think uh, more research to show that the outcomes and the need for a cardiac rehab program for young people is the key to influencing those programs there. Thank you very much everyone for sending in your questions. I hope I have been able to uh, answer some of your queries about exercise physiology in the congenital heart disease population. Thanks again.